My perspective, good, bad, or ugly, is is it productive for an SDR on my team from a booked meetings perspective to build a personal brand? I have not seen someone at their current SaaS organization outbook everyone else and hit their booked meetings quota or hit their close one revenue quota who spent time on a personal brand. The other byproduct that I haven't brought up is there can be a lot of pressure of the more public that you are, now people know you. So whenever a job doesn't work out or you have to you know, move on from an organization or heaven forbid you get fired or something negative happens, more people are watching you. Yeah, so for me, it's not an issue. Like I understand that people might get scared to put themselves out there and being vulnerable mm -hmm. is tough. But every time I've done it and I've done so many mistakes as a CEO, like in the last uh, four and a half mm -hmm. years, I've shared them. Mm -hmm. It's not pleasant to share your mistake. It's not pleasant to tell to people that you've done like some yeah. fucking stupid shit. Yeah. But by doing this, you make yourself perceived as a human being. I'll mm. give you a hug. But gentlemen, <laughs> th see, this was oh, gosh. Oh. two things. None of my top performers have ever had a personal brand. And none of the people that I've seen who have a personal brand were ever top performers at their work. If your <laughs> definition of building a brand is to drive more leads or to win in your job today, I am on your side 100%. And I would say, don't build the brand. I couldn't mm -hmm. be any more clear. But that, so it, I would argue that's not even building a brand. That's mm -hmm. selling. That's outbound selling. That's, yeah, that's how okay? it's viewed. That's I outbound think, selling. Yeah. My definition of a brand is entirely different. And I was really clear. Being it's reach in general. It's reach in general around a topic. And I promise you, Mr. and Mrs. A, uh, AE slash BDR mm -hmm. pass, over time, that will pay off. But when did you start creating that whole flip the script and giving it away for free? I, I worked for G2 and I had had some methods that forexed my team. And so I went to G2 and I said, I have an idea. Let me justify it to you in terms of buyer persona. You want the best SDRs in the market to work for G2. Yes. I said, I have an idea on how we could do that. Give me 500 bucks for budget for pizza and I'll get all the best SDRs in the Bay Area. But my goal was to help them. It will always be to help them. And so I, I told them, look, this will not detract from my job, okay? I'm gonna make sure of it. So I'm gonna start it at 5.30 p.m. and it will go until 9 p.m. I will spend zero work time on this. And what it caused was all of a sudden, I had people asking me to do sales training. So I got up at 5 a.m. to train them for free, to finish by 7 a.m. because at 8 a.m. I had a full-time job and I could not do both. I was up until midnight. Training. Getting up at 5 a.m. And it, it created, and then when I went to Chorus, Chorus had had to inherit the downsides to my personal brand. My goal was always to help, and there were some negative sides to it. I think it's funny, all three of us are sitting it because of the reach we built. But I didn't want this. It doesn't matter if you wanted it. It doesn't matter the, the beneficial outcome. I would not call any of what I've inherited as a benefit. The only benefit that I've received, I know, is that I've been able to more than- Help I've, more people. Right, educate more people. And I have yet to run into someone that their goal of their personal brand was to educate. It is physically impossible for us to do things without getting something in return. Yes, that's true. But it's, it's also physically impossible to not have one focus. Your brain cannot multitask. It just context shifts really quickly. You have one focus and my focus was to help. Other people have their other different motives. And so we can't mm. start telling people what those motives should be. We should just tell them to be authentically themselves and go for it. Just go for it and be your authentic self. So so if the goal's booked meetings, we're no on personal brand, right? Yes, I agree. To me, again, like I don't think you should set your goal in terms of booking meetings. What's your agenda? The it, agenda is to like bring value, build relationship and build trust. For what and outcome? Yeah, the end and the outcome. Again, like the sales, like uh, making a living, etc., is a byproduct of all of that. Your personal brand can help you in many ways. It can help your business grow. It can help you grow as a person. Yeah. Because I do feel like if you want to master a topic, teach it. Mm -hmm. That's like the best thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, you talk about educate, you talk about bringing mm -hmm. value. This is it. When you build your personal brand, you become a teacher. Mm -hmm. If you become a teacher, you're trusted. If you're trusted, you build relationship and down the line, you can't deny it. Like both of you can't deny it. Like our personal brand and me as well has brought us opportunities, opportunities, yeah. meeting booked deals. Sure. Of course, yeah. it's part of the game, but this is a byproduct of everything we create, mm -hmm. all the value we try to bring to people. Yeah. 
And for me, even though it's not my end goal to get meetings, mm -hmm. after some times... You know it will. I know it will. Mm -hmm. yeah. Always. So for me, like the first step is what's in it for me as a CEO to have like sales rep doing it. I think this is like the, the first step. Mm -hmm. Then what's in it for them as a person? Because obviously like we're building companies, but we are like having this relationship with, uh, you know, the people we work with. Mm -hmm. So for me, I know that whenever someone is building a personal brand, mm -hmm. it means that down the line, they will never get into any trouble to find a new job, do something sure. else, launch their business. And I feel like I've helped them to accomplish something on top of boosted them to learn new mm -hmm. things because they are teacher. I also know that I've backed them for whatever happens mm -hmm. next. And for me, this is also like definitely a good habit to take to start writing because the more you write online, the better your cold emails would be, the better the way like your your you, even the way you speak gets better, <laughs> etc. <laughs> like you learn new thing. It forces you to uh, have clearer thoughts on some complex topics. So for me, all of that is really important just as a training. Mm -hmm. And after that, all the byproducts around that, which are the meeting, the event, the webinars are a win. In my opinion, and I'll, I'll clearly say it, in my opinion, at the end of the day, building a personal brand is about reach. That's it. And we can define reach as being good or bad or selfish or not. I really don't want to get into that discussion. Yeah. Right. It's reach, and here's the deal. In order to get that reach, I must bring value. Sure. So if I understand it's reach, and we agree that by default, like physics, you cannot build reach without value, right? Yeah. By default, then, everything I'm doing now is value-based. I, I agree, I agree. If your goal is that, then yes. If your goal is reach, then yes. If your goal is booked meetings and being no. successful as a salesperson. Then that's not personal brand, though, because then, personal mm -hmm. brand doesn't bring value. What do you think is the impact from personal brands on the company's brand itself and hence a great question on all the inbound leads that will be driven through individual personal brands to the company in your opinion because this is something <laughs> I feel like it's not measurable at all yeah so usually the impact is what I see is the thought leader comes in and their view is like well I'm you know Jesus or I, yes, I'm call. the Messiah because people like mm. my posts and then the the company is usually like uh, yeah okay but really we just hired you to now, if you hired them for that brand, all on you. You hire, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But they have to incur the negative impact that the person thinks they're awesome because they get a lot of likes. But then they're like, yo, we don't care about likes. We care about your numbers. And when those are in the dumpster, the leader can't see it. They're like fuzzy on how they're successful. And so there's usually an argument at the C-level where they're like, I deserve to be CMO. And the company's like, not based on your numbers. And they're like, but I have a lot of likes. And they're like, it's not all about attribution. And then the person moves on. Mm. I've seen this happen in several cases, moves on. I, I think you're conflating bad hires with personal brands. And I would also say this, a personal brand, if the objective is SDR, BDR, I don't care, marketing person, if you start a quote on right. personal brand as the goal to get more meetings or to get more inbound or get whatever, that is not starting a personal brand. That is a creative new way of outbound. Yeah. Okay. If you're starting it to grow reach and your goal is to help in order to get that reach to value, then that's an entire, that's bit brand building. I think it's super cool when we have like uh, mm -hmm. disagreements like this because we have different point of view and sometimes our point of view are shaped by our experience yes. and we might have very different experience. Because for me, for example, when you said like uh, all the top performers, like uh, in your sales team, Never. Never were the one with a strong personal they brand. They fought against it. For us at Lemlist, it's, it's, uh, it's the opposite. It's the opposite? Yeah, no. the opposite. <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> And it's fun. Uh -huh. And it's really fun because like the ones with no personal brand at all were by far like less performing than the one with strong personal brand. There is like a clarity in reach. Reach is reach for your own target audience. So for example, if you are like targeting a niche, reach doesn't have to be like uh, Thank in yeah. the million views. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Because reach can mean reaching 10 people. Right. If there are only right. 10 people in, in your the audience, planet, the in your of audience, your audience etc., exactly. having a high reach would mean reach 10 people. Mm -hmm. So it's not only like getting the highest number, it's just like it's reaching depth. the right people. Yeah. Which is still yeah. measured by a number. And I'm going to stop this debate because she can't own it. But it I think we have like uh, <laughs> enough fights. Yeah. <laughs>